Hello guys, welcome back to our favorite channel Tales of Genovia and this is your girl Joy. I have truly missed you guys. I have missed you. I hope you're doing amazing. I have been doing amazing too. So recently guys, I've been thinking a lot about the kind of stories that I wanted to tell my children and in today's video, I wanted to take a moment and celebrate the life of a legend that has impacted the course of history and has left huge, huge footprints in the sands of time. And history has been very quiet about him. And this is the wealthiest man that has ever lived. A black man, an African man. And this is Mansa Musa, the king of the Mali Empire. And you know, the most fascinating thing is his legacy. Because his legacy was about generational wealth, infrastructure, and the revitalization of the African culture. Guys, what else can beat that? Let's get started. But before we get started with the actual story of Mansa Musa, let's cover a little bit of the lineage that led up to his rulership. Before Mansa Musa, there was Mansa Abubakar II and the king of the Mali Empire. Mansa Abubakar was an explorer and an avid traveler, and he had roamed all around his vast empire before yearning to discover what lay beyond the Atlantic Ocean. He had sent the first voyage to go and trailblaze the Atlantic Ocean, and unfortunately, most of his men did not return, and only one ship survived. Our king would then spend so many sleepless months planning for his second expedition. And in 1311, our brave and adventurous king, Mansa Abu Bakr, decided to make the journey himself almost 200 years before Columbus set foot on the American shores. As to whether or not Mansa Abu Bakr made it to the lands beyond the Atlantic Ocean, we cannot deny that this courageous ruler gave up wealth and power in the pursuit of knowledge and discovery. It also tells us that Africa's relationship with the Americas did not begin with slavery, but with explorers, sailors, and kings. Mansa Musa went on to become the greatest of the Mali kings because of the territories that he conquered, the wealth that he amassed, and the legacy that he left to his people. He's generally considered to be the richest man to have ever lived. The wealth that Mansa Musa controlled when compared to the rest of the world during his reign is best illustrated by the pilgrimage that he took to Mecca during the 17th year of his rulership. 
He was a devout Muslim and to this day a pilgrimage to Mecca is something that all devout Muslims plan on doing during their lifetime. And so it is said that the, his pilgrimage through Egypt caused quite a commotion because the kingdom of Mali was relatively unknown outside of Africa until this very event. And Arab writers from the time said that Mansa Musa traveled with an entourage of 60,000 people, including a retinue of 12,000 people, all dressed in royal silk. I have to be honest, I have no idea what royal silk is. I don't think I've ever seen any, but it just sounds super fancy and super expensive. And so he was also preceded by a baggage trail of 100 camels, each carrying 300 pounds of gold. Guys, it was during this pilgrimage that the entire world came to a standstill because it became aware of the astonishing wealth of the Mali Kingdom. While in Egypt, his entourage is said to have spent and gave away so much gold towards the poor people that they met in Egypt that the overall value of gold crashed and it took Egypt another 12 years to recover. Stories of his fabulous wealth would then spread all across the globe and even reached Europe. Mansa Musa became a sensation as depicted in the Catalan Atlas created by Spanish cartographers in 1375 CE, depicting Africa with Mansa Musa sitting on a throne holding a globe of gold on one hand and a golden staff on the other, which insinuated the amount of gold resources in the continent. As soon as the Catalan Atlas was published, European leaders started sponsoring explorers to Africa with the sole purpose of finding the source of Mansa Musa's gold, and the rest is history. What he did is that he invested heavily on education. He built mosques and schools all across his empire, therefore creating an infrastructure of knowledge and culture. Some of those mosques were later used to create the first universities in the world, such as the Sankore Mosque, which became the Sankore University. And they provided a very comprehensive education that could not be found at that time. It had the largest collection of books in Africa, housing over a half a million of manuscripts. This is because Mansa Musa understood the power of educating your own. So there was the Malayan cavalry, and this was like the central intelligence of the Malayan army that reported directly to Mansa Musa. He made sure that all of them had Sudanese horses, which back in the day was like the Benz, the Ferrari, whatever you think is the highest level of cars. This was the best, the strongest, the tallest, and the longest horse that you could find in the world at that time. He made sure that whenever there was a Sudanese horse available, he bought it and only the Malayan cavalry could ride that horse. And so all of those things combined allowed Mansa Musa to take his empire to the next level. So what we learn from Mansa Musa is that it is vital to create systems and infrastructure in our lives that will outwork us and outlive us way beyond when we are no more on this planet. Legacy. Because Mansa Musa created mosques and schools that would keep the culture and the education going on in Africa way beyond past his time when he was no more. So guys, we've come to the very end of our video today. I hope you did enjoy today's session. If you did, please do not forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. I really want to engage with all of you guys in the comment section below. And until I see you guys again in my next video, please stay safe and bye-bye.